Artie Bout, roll three, interview with Kristen Brin, take one. Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Scott Peters and we are Arting About. Kristen, mm -hmm. hello to everybody out there in TV land. Hello everyone in TV land. Uh -huh. I'm Kristen Brin and most people around here call me Miss Brin. Not because I requested it, but to be the pet name people have assigned me. I like it. Miss Brin. Miss Brin. Miss Brin. Miss Brin. <laughs> No, actually, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. I went to the Art Institute in Kansas City and then moved to Chicago, and I lived there for 21 years. And now I'm in California, where it's warm. Okay, and loving the sunshine. So very much. Show us your studio and, you know, kind of... Um, My pleasure. I've been very lucky in Los Angeles as I have this dual garage system as an art studio. It was just fate that I came across it looking for an apartment when I moved here. This is my clean room. I've got the Epson 1180 printer where I make chiclets, and this is where I keep the inventory of finished work, work in progress, and things I'm hiding from people because I'm not ready for them to see. <laughs> so how long, on average, does it take for you to do a painting? Like what, or I'm sure it depends on the piece, but. There isn't an average. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It's the inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it only takes a couple of hours, which often people don't want to hear because it's I'm an established artist and I have a certain price point. But if it pours out of me, it's on. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'm in it for a year or longer. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That piece I showed you with the green vase, it had a lavender background for years. And one night I got out of bed and painted the background black at three in the morning and it was done. It's what called funny. Georgia. Hmm. And it was my first very large painting. Mm -hmm. It's out of my mind, it's just, just my imagination. But I was listening to a Keith Urban song called Georgia over and over again when I was painting it. And that's why it's called Georgia. Mm -hmm. But I'm just madly in love with it. It's big and it's, it's just, it commands a room. And again, as I, I uh, what I liked about your style was as you first look at it, it's very deceiving. When you're looking at your work, it's very easy to walk by and, and think it very nondescript. A and then, I mean, that's that's how yes. I would describe it when I first walked by it until it grabbed me on my shoulder, like I told you. And, and as I looked at it more and looked at it more, I was just fascinated on how you were able to layer these images and sure. keep it so, I mean, what, how do you term this sort of style that you, uh, well, you know, Abstract expressionism, primarily landscapes. I've been preparing this to be a vertical floral painting and had 12, 14 layers of paint on it and penciled in the, uh, the vase with the flowers. And then it was on its side when I re-entered the room, there he was. And if you see, he has a mask in his hand. So, I, you know, he it just won. Just manifests itself. Huh? <laughs> if, if, he, if that's how it's going to be, that, that's right. fine. And I was in this crossroads in my life where I had just finished some recovery from a terrible accident and just was looking for a new beginning. It just took too long to get better. And I had moved here and I was ready. And this is, this is the first white on white painting hmm. and that's when I realized that depth and geometry I love working with rulers you'll see a lot of vertical and horizontal lines that's one of the consistent elements in my work even though it's abstract I'm very interested in architecture and geometry and science married with soothing gentle softness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It can be a contradiction, but I think that it works. This is my most popular selling print. Beautiful. This is a Thank bird's you. eye view of Central Park. As you can see, there's the lake. This is downtown. It's darker. And so tell us a little bit about your time frame and what motivated you here on this piece. This was 2000 and what year is it? <laughs> it's 213. Okay, well, this was 213. I was ready to move away from landscapes and was interested in geometric shapes. Um, there's an artist from the 1970s, Helen 
von Frankenthaler, who is someone I've always admired, and she and an, an, an artist from Chicago, a man named Gary Widener, are my two trying to um, honor and put my own style with. So this is the first geometric piece. A lot of people, oh, I don't see it, but then some people are like, ah, I used to have an apartment right here. <laughs> <laughs> City Reflection, like it's a showstopper. It has a story. I, I love all of the home magazines, and I'm looking through Architectural Digest one day, and they're featuring a beautiful penthouse that overlooks Central Park. Well, the magazine was upside down, and it was the view out mm. their bathroom window. Mm. And what I saw was a reflection of a city. Mm. It was the most obscure thing, but a painting came out of it, and this was an overpaint. You can see something else is going on here, right. but it just gave it so much depth and texture. And texture, mm -hmm. right. Love it. Mm -hmm. This has a story, too. I had a boyfriend in Chicago. His name was Joe Miller, and mm -hmm. he passed away in the lake. His Cessna disappeared in the winter, and we, we never found him. So when mm -hmm. I think of Lake Michigan, it's not, it's not so much blue and beautiful, but this isn't sad either. It mm -hmm. just is... It's usually white and cold and frozen over, but it's mm. still very beautiful. And he was a beautiful person. Mm. And um, mm. what's the title of this piece? Lake Michigan Lake in the Michigan winter. Lake Michigan in the winter. Now, something that amuses me when I'm at an art show: sometimes men will walk in, generally silver-haired older men, and they'll come in and they'll say, "Ah, oh, I could do that." <laughs> right. Uh -huh. I'm sure you can. Yeah, have at it, brother. That's right. I'm sure you can. So. But that's what I mean about what what why I walk by your work, and as I was walking by, I turned and looked back, and I was like, whoa, 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 whoa wait a minute, that's not what it appears to be, and there is paint on there. That no, not only paint, <laughs> but there's there's I, th there is there is blood and guts and emotion and I mean love and all the things that for me as an artist I dig and that's why I'm here. You had a lot of actually you had a, a good display and you were in sort of a tented area I believe. I or had an illegally oversized tent. Uh -huh. I didn't know at the time. <laughs> I'm um, making all the rules. But I had created a, a gallery with very dark walls to uh, help enunciate the white and it, it did it did show very well. Here's one of the jaclets. You can see how close they are. After I print them, I hand embellish them too, so they have topography. They're nice and thick, mm -hmm. and I, I go right over my lines. Now you're talking about the printer, and you're using a term that I don't know. Um, Gicle. Gicle, yes. Gicle. So t it's teach Dr. Peter something today, the please. The Gicle <laughs> is much like the lithograph. It's a one of a kind, beautiful print on canvas or or paper, but it's. Um, it's an expensive process that will last a very, very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And this printer is and 60 eight. inches, so mm -hmm. I can recreate my large art almost nice. to size. Right. Nice. Yeah, this is one that I'm actually... <laughs> okay, I want your printer. I've well, been looking you? at printers for my studio. And, uh, oh, you oh have? Oh well, maybe gosh, I'll sell yeah. you this one. Wow, that's a beautiful piece. <laughs> yeah, right, we <laughs> talk some business. We can. Right? Okay, so um, lead us onwards. So yes, I wanted to just oh, get, yeah, get in, say at this angle, you really see... Yeah. I'm noticing, you, yes. I'm noticing that on some of the angles that you really the images pop out more exactly part of like what i was saying when i walked mm -hmm. by when you, i was mm -hmm. right on it was like hey, and then i came back I was like whoa, mm -hmm. whoa, whoa, whoa yeah with the light on see with the light off you can definitely get a little bit better okay. that that painting is so relatable to men and that makes me happy there's a collection of brooches at the birmingham art museum it's called the look of love and they are uh, jeweled brooches painted on ivory, and women would have their eye painted mm. and mounted onto a brooch. And there's a woman Same. in Birmingham uh -huh. who donated her collection, and I saw it on PBS, and excuse me, I bought the book, uh -huh. and fell in love with it. So I'm doing a series of women in my imagination, and each one eventually will have one of the brooches painted over her eye. Yeah, I'm thinking of like the third eye, almost, like in, 
Right. I'm you not. Know. No. No. Okay. It's, just, it's, it's more of a, you know, I, I won't say Picasso, but I really right. want to make you wonder and have that one eye just huge and crazy and then the rest of her. Uh -huh. um, I'm not really very good at portraits. I don't want it to be cartoony. I abandoned that for a while because mm -hmm. this started happening. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I'm very excited about it. I think mm -hmm. um, my dream is that Birmingham Art Museum would perhaps show these paintings next to the collection. I think that would be a dream come true. Ah, nice. So now, you, you hit on something that's really interesting. Artists, actors, everybody. Mm -hmm. you, you go out and do your thing, and you have a set sort of idea of where you want to go with your piece. The audience comes in, and they take a completely different approach to that, like what Tanya just said, is that, yeah. the, you know, is that third eye. So as an artist, does that concern you uh, when you're working? Do you ever consider that in terms oh. of where the, the I where don't care at all what people think. Okay. They are mm -hmm. welcome uh -huh. to fantasize mm -hmm. and take it to the next level if they want. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. no rules, no regulations, mm -hmm. and um, no, I don't have too much feeling about controlling how other people observe it. I had, I was um, sent a bouquet of flowers, mm -hmm. and I put it into a square glass vase. Mm -hmm. And as flowers do, they, they fall. One day I was across the room and I looked over, and this was the water line, and there were petals floating on top, but there was one flower left. Mm -hmm. And um, I got very, very close and went in like the cameramen do. <laughs> and I saw a wooded area oh, yeah. wow. and a tree. Mm -hmm. So I painted it quickly. It was very exciting, a lot of finger painting. And then it's called Virginia because their state tree is pink. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is the only reason it's called Virginia. Mm -hmm. But it was um, a reflection in the, in the glass vase. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, I know, I was talking to the camera. <laughs> There's another print in the van. But, um, you know. Oh, okay, right. I'm going to do as many different things as I possibly can. Right. All right. Well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's good yourself, to hear, right? I know, because you, I think yes. the same thing sometimes. So, I have a new series that I'm brewing. That is why there are so many blank canvases in here. It's a three painting series, and one's upstairs. But this is going to be um, San Francisco. I'm hoping that it will be ready for you our know, show. I yeah. knew that was what that was yes. going to be. It's so interesting because all I see, you know, I'm looking and I just see that one thing, but immediately. Well, yeah, it's going to. Yeah. Right, right. Immediately it was like yes. San Francisco. Of yes. Of course. The soft San Francisco. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. misty, foggy, beautiful, mm -hmm. calm. Well, it's not always calm there, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. perhaps it's five in the morning and it's calm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But this is, this is, uh, I just started it. Well, thank you for giving us an insight to the beginnings of stuff. Yes. Yeah, you know, another thing, cool. uh, uh, LACMA has been trying to do some interesting things this past year or two where they're, they really want to um, integrate um, technology mm. with the arts. And um, hmm. where was it going with that? Ah, 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 ah. LACMA? Yeah, I was, had, was, there, I was leading to. Rollers, yeah, all those different leading brands. To something. And all right, cut this part. We got the good ending. Anyhow, okay, so we've got this. Th we got white canvas. Just wait. Oh, I now I remember where I was going. Yeah, okay. it's on. Right. The process at LACMA last year was looking for grants trying to integrate uh, people who are experiencing art with the, the artist's actual moment of process. How can we get you to feel, we, the artists, get the, the audience to actually feel what you're going through? Or is it possible to feel, you know, um, can you take those, uh, those, those suits that they put the electronic things on, what do they call it, Karen? What were we talking about yesterday? Virtual reality. Yeah, the virtual okay. reality suits. And yeah. can you take that and put that on Kristen and then get that experience that you were having as you're painting? All, there's all sorts of things, physical things that are in, in yes, psychological things that are happening. That's an interesting question, but I have to say the experience comes before I start painting. 
The painting is just the follow-up. The onrush is the idea. So what am I doing when I have the idea? That's interesting for me. Mm -hmm. And then, then I just can't wait to get in and paint it. All right, so this and is sort of the denouement of the, the, the process, is that what I'm hearing? It's sort of the, your, your, the creation, the thought process of getting ready to come here. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is, this is business. This is technical. I'm good at what I do. I know how to use my medium. I know where to start, how to finish, what technique. But none of that happens until I have the vision. And you can't pull those out of the air. You know, you can hope for them, but you have to be out and about or reading or looking for inspiration. You can't just be here in your studio thinking, what am I going to paint next? Mm. You have mm. to be looking. Mm -hmm. Exactly. How has art helped you in your life in terms of your emotional world and, and mm, that's coping? That's a wonderful question. Mm -hmm. Art is one of the only things I have control over. Okay. So I didn't have control over my health my love life, my family, other people, not even my cat. Um, but I can come down here and make a decision and follow it through to the end. It is the ultimate control for someone with no control. Mm. And mm. I need that when I'm out of control. And when I am settled in my life, it's still a way of carrying on with that Hmm. Control. Control is a rough word because it sounds like it's a vice. Yeah. But it isn't. It's actually a blessing. Young artists, if if they had a one two three, if you give a one two three, you know, what would you tell them? Stop yeah. asking people what they think. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. they don't get so a vote. True. It's art. That's self censorship. What do you think of that? Mm. Yeah. Right. And right. You're paying over it. No, no, no. Just trust yourself. Your instincts are there for a reason, and they're very, very pure. So stick with it. Um, never quit. Go ahead and walk away from it. If you're stuck, abandon it, come back to it. But never give up. Go ahead and paint over it. Try and sell it. Have a, have a show at your house. Have some friends over. Um, but if you're, if you're one of those people who are uptight and intense, and you know that's how you roll, then roll that onto a canvas. Put that frenzy down on canvas and let your crazy out. Right. It's mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, right, right. It's okay. Be yourself, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just be yeah. yourself. Recognize the elements in your work. I have like five things that I do that are very Brin specific. Find out what yours are and keep them consistent. Even if you're painting in dark or white, those elements will be who you are. And when someone's seeking to buy a Brin, they'll recognize those elements, even if I'm ascended into some other color group or size and white on white on white. And my brush stroking is vertical and horizontal. Vertical and horizontal and then I'll Come smear up. it right. and then vertical horizontal. So mm -hmm. I've got these mm -hmm. angles going. I'm looking at some of your pieces and to me that they're I wish I could make you love about me more. it in nah. some ways. <laughs> I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not in the spiritual world. I believe in it, but it doesn't um, drive me. Okay. Um, just I'm just a really happy person. Okay. And I'm just driven by acceptance and peace and and just living day by day and being amused by life and amused by people who are stressed out because <laughs> just you can't control it it doesn't really matter nothing really matters really and that's okay it's okay miss Bryn. miss Bryn. can you do commission work oh absolutely, absolutely. a large that, part of folks? my <laughs> large part of my uh, audience is right. word of mouth commission yes i can't wait to me. get get everybody in the gallery and really um, you know, put this together because it's, it's, uh, I'm mean, really excited to have great artists such as yourself. Thank you. Who love what they do and, and you can see it uh, vibrate through your work. And Kristen Bryn, we're happy to be here and thank, thank you for your time. Thank you. And uh, I think that's another episode of, that's Art. another episode of Art in the Okay, thank you so much, <laughs> Kristen. Thanks for your time. Say it again. Photo puzzler. One more time. Photo. Puzzler. That's you. Photo puzzler. Right now, designer. Photo puzzler. And subconsciously, I don't think we ever know what we want to shoot when we go out and shoot it. And then at the same time, I think we do. 
So I have an idea or a premise inside my head of what I want, but it's not until I get out there that I really get it. I have an idea in my head of what I want to go and shoot. A story, a storyboard inside my head of what I want to go and shoot. But I'm never stuck to it because when I get out there, usually that storyboard will change. We do not know what we're doing when we're doing it. So I just think we do it because we want to keep talking and this is just our dialogue. Without your name and you put it up on the wall, will somebody be able to walk in and say, I know whose work that is? Well, how do you know? Because I know how you use this light. I know how he likes to use his colors. I know what type of subjects they like to use. I know what time of day they'll probably shoot this photograph. I want you to see how I see the world. Come get a brother out. Arting about, roll four. Interview with Adam Stone. Take one. Hi, this is Dr. Robin Scott Peters. And we are arting about. Today we are meeting artist extraordinaire Adam Stone. So Adam, say hello to our guests out there in TV land. Hello everybody out there in TV land. Welcome to my home studio. Well, you know, I've been doing this, all of this, I've been doing this for about uh, 33 years now and I'm still trying to figure that out. Yeah, I'm a, love, a lover of character. I'm a lover of movement. You'll, you'll find there is movement in every single thing that I do. When I get up and I paint, a lot of times I have real ideas, concrete ideas of what I want to play with and uh, concepts that I want to explore. And so often they literally change up as I'm working. They're truly organic. And it's almost like I'm expressing whatever it is. I don't even always know how I tap into it. The, the karate kid, you gotta keep <laughs> chopping, on, wax, wax on, on yeah, wax, wax on, off, wax on, <laughs> for about 30 years. And I'm still waxing. Oh, I'm man. still waxing, but I'm starting to see a little bit of shine yeah, here. By the way, this is all just off the cuff. <laughs> There is no rehearsing here. No I don't know where he's coming. I gotta be like, you know, going like this. I don't know how wide this this lens is. I don't know what he's getting. You know, but if I, if I offend any of you, I apologize in advance. Folks, I don't know if Adam's gonna bother you with this beautiful work here. So. I am Ramona Simone sensors. Picasso, and, and I approve this. You know. Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Scott Peters, and I'm the executive producer of Arting About, the program you just watched. And we're so glad that you tuned in, and I hope you found it very interesting and exciting and informative, and that, of course, you saw some great art from an amazing artist, Alyssa Stakar. This next month, we have so much great programming for you. We have Adam Stone, I, I call his work fantasy, and Kristen Brin, she is an impressionistic landscape artist. And then we have Gretchen Davis, who just has this really whimsical and fantastical sort of sensual humor with the series of ladies and starlets and uh, all sorts of interesting stuff that's out there. We're also going to be bringing you some great music. Paula Samante, we're going out to Biscuits and Blues in San Francisco. Over here in Elk Grove is a great place, a sports bar right off of Elk Grove, Florida on Tuesday nights that has amazing musicians. Do you know right in your own backyard how, and it's for free, how great quality theater, music, art, film, everything is, is out there. And this studio right here at 305 4th Street in Galt is an artistic conversion zone. What does that mean? It means that we are committed to bringing to you, you the public, great fine art, great theater, great music, great teaching, great photography, great sculpture, you know what I'm getting? Great food, great wine, all of that is the arts. Sensuality, our senses, the six senses that we have, um, that's what art works on. And our job as artists is to pluck and play those strings. And so what we're doing here 
And what we're trying to do with Arting About is to play those strings for you. So we are a little quirky, we use different angles, we use different lenses, I use different editing techniques, I have different people that come in and uh, will guest host for us. I like to be behind the camera, let them do all the, the talking, and, and we're just going to try to bring to you something that's really interesting and different and, um, you know, informative to teach and to entertain as the wise philosophers and aestheticians spoke of. So, enough of that stuff, and I just thank you again. Tell a friend, support us by watching us and telling other people to watch us. And, and if you have some time, come on down to the theater, the, the studio, see what we're doing. Not just Alyssa's work, but seven or eight amazing artists. We have stained glass, we have blown glass, we have handmade hats, we bring in sculptures. It's always rotating. We have thousands of square feet of, of art and we're expanding into thousands more. So come support us as we go arting about. Ciao.